Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the pixellab.net. So I'm sure you're aware at this point that Maxon released a plugin last week uh, that takes Adobe After Effects projects and brings them into cinema. And when I heard this, I was uh, a little bit skeptical because I've used other plugins in the past that have tried to do this. And I quit after one try because they were pretty, uh, pretty glitchy and uh, a little bit complicated and they didn't bring the data in correctly. Uh, but I gave this, uh, this a good solid try and I have to say I am super excited about this. I think it depends a little bit on your background if you're going to find this useful. I'm actually an After Effects guy. I grew up using After Effects. I'm very comfortable in it. And a lot of projects I do start out in After Effects. Um, if you do everything in cinema, maybe this won't be useful, but I'm going to go ahead and show you one way that you could maybe utilize this plugin. Um, you have to download this guy and unzip it and put the plugin in your Adobe After Effects folder and then restart Adobe After Effects. And then when you do that, if you go to File, Export, there's going to be a new little button here called Cinema 4D Exporter. So I've roughed up this quick composition. So let's say that I've made a complete project in Adobe After Effects and I have a camera move, I have all my 2D layers, I have my text, everything's kind of roughed out. And this is the way that I work a lot of the time. I do a lot of my designs in After Effects. And uh, if this project is completely 2D, I'll probably place all my layers and do camera moves inside of After Effects. But then I'm kind of limited because if I bring 3D elements into here, they're not gonna stick with the scene and they're gonna look pretty flat, right, as soon as I get any rotation. So let's go ahead and hit File, Export, and let's go to Cinema 4D Exporter. Let's go ahead and make a new folder, call this Test. Okay, and then it saves out, actually it saves out a uh, Cinema 4D project file. So we're gonna go ahead and open that. And what you're gonna see is it brings in a folder and all these different layers. So what it's looking at is solids. So it brought in all of my solids and a camera and on my solids it brought in the textures and correctly textured them. Now because I have transfer modes, you're not gonna be able to see some of these. So let's go ahead and delete a couple of these things. And uh, now you're starting to be able to see kind of the layout of my After Effects composition, right? So how is this useful? Well, let's go ahead and add a uh, mo text into here. And let's just say that um, I want 3D text in this composition, right? I want to keep everything the way it is, but I really want some 3D text to kind of add a little bit of polish to it, right? So let's go ahead and hit uh, join here. And uh, one really cool thing about R13 is if you go to your font and click it open, it's going to bring up a little preview icon of all the fonts, which is really, really, really handy. So I would definitely think about upgrading just because of this font thing. It's pretty sweet. Um, so let's use an overused font just because we can and uh, kind of start placing this guy in our scene, right? So we'll kind of move it back a little bit figure out where we want it in Z space, figure out what rotation we want on it. Because the camera move is already uh, kind of set in stone, all we have to do is just place it exactly where we want it. Throw a quick texture on there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I have another project file with sort of the scene with an HDRI and all that business, and I'll just drop that in here for now. And um, we'll go ahead and uncheck our camera so we can get out of our camera. Make sure to uh, not move that camera at all, right? Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and grab our lights, just move them forward a little bit so we can light that text a little bit. So we'll just kind of drop those lights into the front and then check on our text. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to get that text to look good. This is kind of just an example. So then what we can do is drag our camera out of here and then we'll twirl up our number one and we'll uncheck it. Now one thing I do want to mention is that if we go into our render settings, you'll see that it has the same specifications as my After Effects comp and it has the same amount of frames already queued up in our render, which is really, really cool. So then all we have to do is go to our uh, test folder, make a render folder, call this uh, test C4D, and um, I'm just gonna leave these default. Oh yeah, the one thing I do need to do is make sure to check on uh, alpha channel, right? Because we just want this text. So then we'll go ahead and hit render, so one thing to point out is that because we're doing a JPEG sequence render instead of rendering out a QuickTime MOV, we can actually go into After Effects and start working with this uh, even while it's rendering, which is really good for workflow. So let's go ahead and find our first frame and make sure TIFF sequence is set. Go ahead and bring that in here straight unmatted. Now all we have to do is drag that into here and let's go ahead and delete the old text here. 
this woman and this one. And now you can see that we have our uh, 3D text in here. So even though it's rendering in Cinema 4D, um, we can still kind of work on it here. And you'll notice that we have this sort of tail here. So every frame that gets done, this tail is going to grow and we can kind of stretch it out. Uh, so when it's done, it'll be at the full length of our comp. Anyway, that's just kind of a workflow tip that will save you a little bit of time. Definitely work in JPEG sequences or TIFF sequences. Don't ever render out as QuickTime movies. All right, so let's do a quick RAM preview. And there you go. You can see that we have our completely 3D text in here that respects the camera move. It doesn't look flat or anything. Completely fits in there, which is absolutely awesome. So that's one way that you can use the After Effects C40 plugin. Um, and the cool thing is it brings in camera, it'll bring in your solids, it'll bring in your background, and it will bring in lights too. So you can even light your 3D element in Cinema 4D with the same lights that are in this scene. If you have any kind of tracker for After Effects like the Foundries tracker, that would be an unbelievable way to track footage in After Effects to get the tracking data and then to make a camera and then to bring that camera into cinema and that way you can place 3D elements into live action. That would be a very, very sweet workflow. So yeah, I think this is just another tool in our workflow that's gonna kind of open up a lot of different possibilities. I'm really excited to try that Foundry tracking method and if that works out, I will definitely do a tutorial on that. And uh, yeah, play around with it. I'm very, very impressed and I hope that uh, you find some use out of it. Take care, we'll talk again later, bye.